they play a little music so don't get alarmed when it first come on say hello to a couple of guy folks that always get on with us and then we're gonna jump right into it really i know they gave you some questions but i'm really uh it's gonna be really easy what's going on and uh you know i know you don't know how long it's gonna last so i'm not gonna ask you that just really what the impact is i mean we got people rushing supermarkets you know people rumors on and they're gonna run out of gas just really talking to people about just calming their fears that's really what this is about today it's helping me calm people's fears in the city and sounds good thank you thank you Rama, how you doing? Ardelia, took me a minute. I had some technical difficulties. I had to go way down to Mississippi to get this for y'all today now. Donna Sellers, Julia Barron, how you doing? Ardelia, holding the Central Ward down. Donna Sellers, Julia Barron, how you doing? Tanya Tucker, Brian Atar, Tweet Montague, Clet Moses. Free Kirk Franklin tickets. I'm working on that for you. Prudential Center, y'all. I'm, I'm working on that. Let me, let me get back to me. I, I got you. Gwen Smith Stokes, Lillian Coutinho, how are you? Takima Neal, Bernice. What's going on, Bernice? How are you? Elaine Lee. Thank you, Billion. That sounds good, Donna Karama. That's that backwoods Mississippi on a stump prayer meeting music right there. Ruth Ellis. How are you, James Williams, Reverend Scott Roundtree, Councilwoman Reverend Scott Roundtree? How you doing, sister? Mike Mincy, you just called me, Reverend Roundtree. You didn't, you didn't know I was on Facebook Live. James Wingfield, Ali Gurley. We got a good conversation for you guys today, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, what's going on at the port. So just going to have them really talk to you try to assuage some of your anguish and fears out there. I know there's a lot of misinformation, so I really just want to get into that today. So Jada, I had an opportunity to go down there and speak to some of the men and women that, that were at the port. So that was a good experience. Is it five? Yeah, here we go. So let me jump right, let's jump right in because I, I don't want, I want to get right into the conversation. All right, so today, uh, folks, we have uh, with us, uh, I know Beth Ann Rooney is here with us. She is the Port Director of Port Authority, New York and New Jersey uh, for for uh, us here, Beth Ann Rooney and Aaron Cruz, is that right? That's Deputy, right, Mayor, thanks for having me. Deputy Chief Counsel and Director of the Governor's Authorities Unit in the Governor's Office. So we have somebody from the state here in the Governor's Office and from the Port uh to talk to us about what's going on so uh, just really really want to jump right in uh i mean that's the general question of what's going on because right now everybody's heard it from the news and I, i'm sure they don't really understand what's happening so if somebody could just begin there it would be great thank you absolutely i think that's a good place to start mayor so this strike is the result of an ongoing labor contract dispute in the maritime industry between our nation's dock workers on one hand and their employers on the other so the dock workers are represented by the International Longshoremen's Association, also known as the ILA, and the largest union of maritime workers in North America. 
Uh, those workers are absolutely critical to the movement of goods and commodities through our country's ports. And their employers are represented by the United States Maritime Alliance, <clears throat> also known as the USMX. That's an alliance of container carriers, direct employers, and port associations that serve the east and gulf coasts of the United States. There's a master contract between the USMX and the ILA that expired on September 30th of this year. And because no master contract has been agreed to, the ILA began a strike yesterday. Now, that doesn't mean that just because they're on strike, anyone needs to run out to the grocery store and stock up in a panic. Because of the work that the folks at the ports have already done to ensure that containers were unloaded before the strike to the extent possible, it could be a matter of weeks before most folks feel any impact here. And that's all, of course, dependent on how long the strike lasts. And some goods and services will remain completely unaffected. So we have cruise ships will not be impacted, U.S. military ships, petrochemical, petrochemicals, and very importantly, gasoline, jet fuel, and home heating oil will not be impacted. More good news is that when it comes to pharmaceuticals, many prescription medications enter the country by plane rather than by ship and may not be significantly impacted by the strike. And additionally, most items already headed to the United States in anticipation of the holiday season have actually already arrived and are also less likely to be impacted by the strike. So anybody who had plans for running out and buying some holiday lighting, decorations, paper products, clothing, toys, other non-perishable holiday goods, you do not need to move that up on your schedule. Right. Those are important things you just said. Just want to reiterate some stuff before I let Beth Ann jump in. Uh, one, you know, I've been getting calls about gas and, uh, you know, gas prices going to go up, you know, you, you, you have heating fuel. So none of this is affected. Gas is not affected. Oil, oil, petroleum is not affected by the strike at all. Is, is that right? That's correct, Mayor. And then Division of Consumer Affairs within the Office of the Attorney General will continue to monitor, as they always do, alleged instances of price gouging to ensure that consumers are not ripped off by because of the strike. Right. And and there is this uh, discussion. So I guess Beth and I could jump into this part starting here, because people think that the truckers and the uh, longshoremen are the same and they're completely different organizations. Uh, and I think that should be laid out because if people don't hear you even saying that. I've heard that. Uh, so that needs to be straightened out. And uh, small businesses uh, as well, just because some of these things are already in warehouses as we speak, right? So Beth, yeah. Ann, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thanks for having me, uh, Mr. Mayor. And, and thanks for coming down to the port this morning to, to show your support. Um, so the longshoremen, the dock workers, are the individuals who load the cargo on and off of ships, trucks, and trains. The truckers, in the case of the Port of New York and New Jersey, pick up about 85% of the containerized cargo that comes into the port. The other 15% uh, goes out by rail. So the unfortunate um, uh, consequence of the dock workers going out on strike is that most of the trucking community is unable to work um, these days as well. And most of the trucking community are, are what are uh, largely known as independent owner operators. Uh, they're you know, individual small businesses that contract themselves out uh, to uh, either small trucking companies, truck brokers, uh, and whatnot. There are certainly some uh, company owns uh, drivers and, and trucking companies, but uh, most of the cargo that had been pulled out of the port uh, early uh, in advance of the strike has already been delivered. Uh, so a lot of those drivers, uh, unfortunately, are, are home, um, unable to work in, until this is resolved. And, and they work many of them on a, a per move basis uh, rather than on hourly or, or daily uh, wages. So we are certainly concerned about the independent truck driver and the impact that, that this strike will have on them. And then there are other uh, small businesses, you know, down the ecosystem uh, that, you know, could be impacted uh, by this as well. I mean, I, I think about, you know, even uh, the lunch trucks, you know, here in the port, uh, they're used to seeing 15 to 16,000 uh, truck trips a day. Uh, and all of those truck drivers, you know, are stopping, you know, at, at small lunch trucks, small businesses, uh, many of them, you know, licensed by the city of Newark, 
um, and they're stopping, you know, to get their breakfast, their lunch, their dinner. Um, and those individuals, you know, don't um, have folks stopping by their lunch trucks. Right. Uh, you know, absolutely. Um, so just the, the, the impact that you think that this is going to have, period. I mean, jump in on, on, on the, uh, the economy, like uh, of, of the city, of the state, like what impact is this going to have? And I just want to say, I went down there and talked to some of the guys and ladies, and I, you know, and they don't want to be out there that long either. So, uh, a resolution is 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 great. I don't think that they are trying to stay out there, you know, forever. So we need to make sure um, that that happens, like right, to to help them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I just want to add one more um, uh, area of the port that is impacted by this, and and that's the automobile trade. Uh, so, you know, while we are not uh, the largest automobile port by any means, uh, we do supply uh, new automobiles, uh, certainly to uh, the four state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, uh, and sometimes beyond. Uh, but the automobiles, new automobiles that come off the ships um, are also impacted by this. So, you know, the numbers that the news has been reporting in terms of the economic impact uh, are massive, and those are numbers about what it would mean for the entire East and Gulf Coast. So, you know, let me be clear that uh, this is not a Port of New York and New Jersey issue. Uh, this has got every port from Maine to Texas uh, shut down. Um, the master contract uh, that was referred to uh, earlier by, by Aaron uh, is supplemented with individual local contracts that address uh, some of the local rules and policies. And for the most part, the local contract in the Port of New York and New Jersey, uh, most of those matters were resolved close to a year ago. Uh, but until the master contract uh, is done, uh, these uh, longshoremen uh, remain on strike. So uh, to the economic impact um, question, in the New York, New Jersey uh, region, which is a, a, a 16 county region, our chief economist in the Port Authority um, estimates that uh, this is costing our region uh, 250 to $300 million a day. Wow. Wow. You want to add something uh, to that, uh, Aaron? No, I would just echo Beth's sentiment that, you know, this is not just a regional impact. It, depending on how long this goes on for, for it could very well uh, be felt nationally across the country. Right. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> it definitely could be felt nationally. So do, so at some point, because uh, right now the public sector is not really engaged in this, right? It's just really the longshoremen and the uh, container companies at this point, right? Well, so I, I would say that the public sector, you know, is involved in as much as, um, you know, we've been meeting, you know, with the state of New Jersey, you know, governor's office, the emergency managers, departments of health, transportation, you know, and, and whatnot. We've been doing the same thing uh, on New York, with New York State and, and, and New York City. Um, and, and really looking at the potential supply chain impacts for things that I would consider are life safety uh, products or commodities and things that support manufacturing, uh, components uh, that are needed um, in manufacturing uh, locations, components that are uh, going into the auto processing and the auto uh, manufacturing in the, in the Midwest and um, creating uh, things like um, electrical wire. Uh, so when you think about, um, you know, the, the devastating situation in, in North Carolina and the need to replace uh, electrical wire, uh, we have a facility right here on the port that produces um, the, the wire that is used in uh, the transmission of, of electricity and they need to get the, the raw materials in and those raw materials come in containers. Wow, okay. And, and Mayor, you know, much like the ports themselves, the state isn't a direct party to the negotiations between the ILA and the USMX, but that doesn't mean, you know, that we're sitting on our hands. We're working around the clock to prevent major disruptions for, you know, to New Jersey. Um, the governor, like Beth alluded to, has been in close contact with state agencies 
the White House, Governor Hochul, and both the ILA and the USMX. Uh, and he's also been in direct contact with court officials, um, including including Beth herself. Right. All again with the goal of just once this concludes, we want to get right back into full functioning operations at our ports again. So we're doing the, we're taking those steps in the meantime to make sure that that happens once that moment comes. Yeah. Good. And I'll add to that um, if I can. Um, yeah. That, that um, the United States Coast Guard, uh, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the U.S. Maritime Administration, and the Port Authority um, are meeting on a daily basis. Uh, all designed to think already about the restart. And when there is a contract that is signed and we can get back to work, um, how do we prioritize the ships that are out already out at sea uh, waiting to come in? Uh, are there commodities on those ships, uh, again, that are in those critical life safety um, or, or manufacturing uh, areas so that, so that we can prioritize those? Um, U.S. Coast Guard and Customs are doing inspections and boardings, you know, of ships now, uh, even though they're they are unable to come in uh, yet. But we want they want to be ready so that as soon as that valve is opened, uh, they can begin uh, to come in. And we will be prioritizing uh, with the Coast Guard uh, the order in which the ships uh, come in uh, when it is appropriate to do so. Right. No, that's, that's, that's great. This is good information uh, that, that you're giving us. Is, is there something that critical you think that we should know before we get off of this? Like something critical you think that we might be missing uh, uh, because these people talk to other people and we're going to run this you yeah. know, a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the big message uh, really for everybody that's listening, you know, is that this is not a time for panic. Uh, you know, we're 48 hours into this. I've been working here in the port for 35 years. Um, and, you know, I was just going through some of our history in my mind. You know, we've been shut for two days now because of the strike. Uh, that is not unusual in a winter storm uh, right. for us. Um, we were shut for four days uh, after Hurricane Sandy. Uh, we were shut for five days, you know, after 9-11. So, um, this is, not, while it is an uncomfortable time, um, it is not something that we have never seen before. Uh, we know how to recover uh, from these types of situations. Uh, so the message to the, to the public and the residents of Newark um, is not to panic. Uh, there's no need, you know, to run out and uh, strip the store shelves, you know, of the toilet paper right. and the paper towels right. and, right. and the right. produce. Right. Um, you know, it's going to continue to come. And, you know, look, if 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 a week from now uh, things aren't resolved, um, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'd be happy to come back. And, you know, yeah. maybe it's a little bit I'm of a different, <laughs> you know, different conversation a week from now if it's still yeah. ongoing. But, you know, right now uh, there's no need to panic. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, you, do you want to add to that, Aaron? And I got one last question. No, Beth, Beth really couldn't have said it. I, mean, I couldn't have said it any better than Beth did. There's, there's no need to panic. Do not run out to the grocery store and start freaking out. You know, we're working right. around the clock to mitigate any impacts here, and we're poised to get back to work as soon as we're able. Right. Or, or the, 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 the response should be stop running out and doing that because people <laughs> have already that. Yep. cut it out. So, yeah. Remember, you have, you have gas in your car right now. You have a full grocery store right now. There's, there's nothing to panic about today. Right. E excellent. Um, so. Um, somebody asked, and I don't know if you guys can answer this on, on this thing. Is is uh, what are some of the issues that that are they they are negotiating or fighting about? Obviously, you're not you don't belong to any of these organizations, so yeah. you wouldn't know the details of any of that. But it yeah. was asked, can, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can take that. I mean, so the first one is is predominantly wages, um, and the concern is that the foreign ocean carriers. Um, during the pandemic, you know, made uh, considerable amounts of money and uh, the longshore workers who uh, never left the front lines and were essential personnel, you know, would, would like a fair share of that. Uh, the second issue is uh, really about job protections uh, having to do with uh, automation and uh, semi-automation and the uh, introduction of uh, those technologies into the port environment. Uh, in a way that would threaten uh, their jobs. Um, so it's it's really about you know keeping keeping them on the job and not being replaced, you know by by computers and robots. Uh, 
Um, and the, the third issue um, has to do with um, what is called off port work. Uh, things that have been moved off port in uh, recent years. And again, it's not just in New York and New Jersey, it's, it's the entire East and Gulf Coast. Uh, but activities that have been moved off port um, and in doing so uh, may, lo may no longer be longshore jobs uh, that they'd like to get back. Yep. So just, just a few things that I want to say before we get out of here. Uh, the, the fact that um, some of the stores are empty. You got to, you know, you always got the normal people on here uh, that are going to try to excite, incite foolishness. But ult ult ultimately, because people are going out buying stuff, they're panicking. That, that does not mean that the warehouses are empty. It means that the store has to go get more stuff from the warehouse because you guys are running to the store and buying everything off of the shelves right away. Uh, and there's no need really to do that. Uh, warehouses are stocked. Uh, and you don't even know if some of the things you're getting are even affected by because it's it it, it is by uh it is and stop me if i'm wrong it's by product by product so you don't even know if the stuff you're going to get is will be affected by this anyway like uh, i heard somebody say on a call that uh, between nike and adidas you don't know if nike probably has that all their warehouses triply stocked and they can they can last for a month as opposed to other other places. And if this thing, be, so right now, today, tomorrow, uh, everybody should be okay. Oil is not a problem, gas is not a problem, and the stores should be okay. Uh, and if, if this thing begins to prolong itself for a few weeks, we'll bring people back and have a, a, another discussion uh, about those things uh, because people, uh, now we had a different situation, but right now there's no need uh, to in fact panic uh, always listen to people who know what they're talking about, information, science, solid stuff, uh, not like fringe sites on the internet or individuals who have trying to build up their followers by saying the most egregious things that they can uh, to get you to like their page. You know, you, you need to come up here, listen to reasonable folks, have a discussion about it. And uh, we've marched ourselves through the pandemic. We're going to march ourselves through this. Uh, and if there's any information you need, I'll bring people back to give you some solid information. Uh, if, if there's need for us to panic, we'll panic then. But today, everything should be okay. Uh, uh, you know, um, and so there's no need to rush out to the stores and grab everything. It just doesn't make sense to do that, you know, at this point. So, uh, yep. So I appreciate you guys getting on. Aaron, Bethann, we appreciate you. I know the city appreciates you. Uh, you know, we, we've had, you were very, very informative for us. And I'll bring you back uh when, when, when it's necessary so thank you and i, and I thank all of y'all for jumping on god yep, bless very good. Thanks, thanks mr mayor appreciate it i guess we're good to go